Chasing Dreams podcast. I am so excited to have today's guest with us, Miss Rochelle Thompson. Y'all, when I tell you she is a powerhouse, she is amazing, and I'm just honored to know her, honestly and truly. Um, so with that being said, please welcome Miss Rochelle Thompson. I'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit. Let us know what, let the people know who you are, what you're doing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you, Pierre, for that intro. You are just such an amazing individual, a oh. uh, beautiful person, and I, again, just love everything that you're doing. Um, and so for your viewers, I am Dr. Rochelle Thompson. I got my doctorate in psychology from the University of Maryland College Park. Yes. Um, I have been in my practice for about two years now by myself. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> um, so I am, I am just that, you know, working in mental health is really important to me. Um, and in the private sector, it's been important. You know, I've had my share in the military and with the government, which is what I do during the day um, with the United States. Good yep. day life. Um, <laughs> don't judge me by what you see. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so being a therapist and being an entrepreneur, I think, has been, you know, essential, especially in the time that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. um, so health and wellness is something that I've always been passionate about. But how do you do that in a way that, you know, it affects people positively without being a nonprofit? Yeah. You know, so I just, you know, that was something that I wanted to launch into. So that's me, your girl, um, down to earth, yeah. Rochelle from the hood. Okay. <laughs> you know, people, I don't like them to call me Dr. Thompson, you know, it's just Rochelle, you know, so that's yeah. pretty much my story. Yes, for sure. And so one of the things that I am a huge advocate for is for mental health and for seeking therapy. So if you are looking for a Black female therapist, you found one. Hi, Adrian. I'm on psychology today, girl. We, we can yes. go on, but you know, yes. that's not why we're here today to market me. But I think that it's important for people to know that I am around. Hello. To know that that <laughs> exists, because I firmly believe having a therapist that looks like you cuts through half of the barrier. Yes. You know, I don't have to tell you what it means to be a black woman in America. Yes. You already know. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Yes. So what would you say is the dream for you? You know, honestly, my dream or the dream, the American dream that we think of, right, um, is really my legacy. You know, what is my legacy on this earth? And I had to think about that. And it was to make sure that I touch, you know, one person positively. And then they spread that energy to someone else that they touch positively. So if I can go through this world doing that with anybody that I touch, I can create a positive encounter as opposed to being somebody's headache. But let me be your peace. Yeah. That for me is is important. You know, when I die, I want people to be able to really go up and say the things about me that are true, not having to like make up what they're going to say, but it, it, you know, mean it. exactly. And I think that that's important for people to think about because the dash in between your, your tombstone, and I don't want to get too dark with it, but this is real, right? That part isn't there. Mm. So you define what's in between the beginning of your life and the end of your life. And so for me, that is my ultimate dream, that if I leave here tomorrow, I know yesterday I was a good person. I know yep. yesterday I inspired someone. I know yesterday I apologized because I may have hurt someone, and I'm, I'm at peace with that. So that ultimately, it's not about money. It's not about things. You know, just being a good mom, you know, and just being a good person, the best person that I know I can be is, is my dream. And I think that I'm almost there. Yes, for sure. And I think that's why we have so much synergy in our relationship, because the dream is very similar. So like just making an impact, you know, yeah. and I remember even when I go back to my first event, I said, if even just one person is positively impacted, I'm happy. Yes. You know? And having that perspective, uh, when you go out and do the things that we do, uh, I mean, yeah, money's great. Yeah, I need to charge what I'm worth because I'm a full-time entrepreneur. But yeah. also, like, I would do it for free. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yes, would, exactly. 
like it's about impact, you know? And like, I actually had that conversation um, with one of my clients. I'm like, you know, I could be charging you, you know, thousand dollars a month for my coaching services. So when I ask you, what's your budget? You might want to give me a number, you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> you may give a number because I'm doing it. Yes. I need the income. Sure. But more importantly than that is the impact. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're on the same page there. No for, doubt. For sure. So when did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years? Probably. So I wanted to do public service and I ran for county council. That has been, you know, politics has definitely been something that's very important to me. And I think it wasn't until after I ran for the election mm. and I realized that I may have a lot of power if I get a position like that, but would I be happy? Like, am I fulfilling mm -hmm. my purpose? And so it was at that moment, you know, when I lost, you know, and it was hard to take an L, but I was going through so much at that time. And I try to take positive pieces mm -hmm. from, you know, my losses. So I was like, man, you know what? I had really wanted to do that. Because my whole intention for running was really just to spread awareness about a community that had been ignored for so long. So that's how can I make that same impact without having to get my hands dirty, without, you know, being so attached to people? Because that is a draining job. Mm -hmm. No one is ever going to be happy. So mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I think it's time that I did things on my own. And I'm going to try to do it that way. And okay. if I could impact people's mindset on a smaller level, one by one individually, then that might, that might get me to where I need to go. And so I, I just jumped out there. And so I think that that was at that moment, I realized, you know, I need to be in this lane yeah. and it had been calling me for forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had been, since I was maybe, you know, eight or nine, I had always brought people together you know, I was always trying to do fundraisers, rallies, pep rallies and stuff for school, reaching out to people, mm. you know, 16, 17 years old, trying to do stuff for the community and for people. And I just could never really get away from it. And so I just stopped running from it. Yeah. And our purposes have been there, you know, all of our lives. It's just we have to realize, like, that's the thing, you know. Yes. Um, but once you sit down and have that moment, you're on fire for it. Yeah, like it, it's hard to not be on fire once you discover what your true God given purpose is for sure. Oh my goodness, you are touching a spot, girl. I'm about to tell yes. you right now in the name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. so why do you think? Um, today we're here to talk about overcoming struggles, right? Okay. So, why do you think people are embarrassed by their scars, embarrassed by their struggles, and some of the things that they're going through? You know, shame is is really hard you know but it's heavy too it's mm -hmm. heavy you get tired of carrying it yeah. but we are in a world or in a society where we only see a glimpse of someone's story and that's the that's highlight that's reel yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> okay yes. and, and i have to be real when I talk to people and let them know like you're living your life for you not for anybody else mm -hmm. and so we get embarrassed by well people accept us am I really good enough and and I don't think I think they'll reject me if they know this about me um and it's not really until you take off all of these labels that everybody else gives you and you say hmm I'm gonna wear this this is my story this is who I am you feel like you're lifted because you can't hold me accountable for something that I've already forgiven myself for. Hello. You can't keep rubbing that in my face once I let it go. Hello. So, you know, people, I think it's so caught up in the keeping up with the Joneses mm -hmm. that they forget, like, everyone goes through things. We all have struggles. We all have problems. Mm -hmm. But it's just that shame, man. It's, it's crazy. And I try to make sure especially when I'm dealing with my clients that, you know, I'm transparent when I can be, you mm -hmm. know, after the session is over, somebody may, you know, be a wreck. And I let them know I'm a single mother. I've gotten divorced. I've, you know, had my share of making dumb decisions with men. I've right. had my share of not feeling worth something. I've had my share of feeling selfish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can do it, you know, if I can do it, you can do it too. Just let it go. Just mm -hmm. own it. And so 
that's what I do, you know, and I think that people can start feeling comfortable. And I think the way that the COVID-19 has caused us to be, we're mm-hmm. seeing how real it is. Mm-hmm. Even on social media, I'm okay. seeing how real people are. Yeah. So. And that's one of the things I try to stay cognizant of, especially with me being in the light of a motivational speaker and, you know, people expect me to be uplifting and happy and, you know, all of the things. And I try to be cognizant of like, it's not always a good day. (laughs) You know what I mean? And if I can show you the good days, I can show you the bad days too. And I remember um, one day I just had a crappy day. And so I posted something on Facebook and my mom called me and was like, well, why didn't you call your mother? And I was like, I wasn't really posting it because I needed validation. I was posting it to give someone else validation that it's okay to not be okay. Yes. That it's okay to have a bad day and that they are a real part of life. Yes. Like, yes, you can be in a funk. And that's okay. Like, things happen. And when I tell you that, like, it was just one thing after another after another. I was like, oh, my God. Just throw the whole day away. <laughs> throw the whole day away. Um, but just trying to be mindful of the fact that um, it's almost natural to only post a highlight reel because, you know, you don't want to air your dirty laundry, or, you know, all of these uh, colloquialisms that we have, like, adopted in the, in the community. But at the same time, I feel like it's my responsibility to be honest. Yeah. And if I'm not okay today, I'm not okay today. Yeah. And I agree with you 100%. We've been so conditioned. And I will say for our group of demographics, mm-hmm. our age, our race, Mm-hmm. We have been so conditioned to hide mm-hmm. and live in secrecy and not express, you know, what the truths are. And we're not really authentic. And you can see that it weighs on us the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We we act out in some um, really crazy ways. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for people to be able, I'm the same way as you. Like, I get on there, social media, this is what I look like today. Okay. You know, no lace front. <laughs> <laughs> no lashes, no makeup. No, nothing. Take me, take me. For who I am. <laughs> or don't take me at all. Or don't at all, okay? If you cannot and, and, handle me at my best, you cannot have me at my worst, okay? Come on. So if you can handle me at my worst, you can't have me at my, <laughs> have me at my best. <laughs> and that's real, you know what I mean? So I just, you know, I think like you, we can be just one, you doing it and on your part, I'm doing it on my part. And then it just spreads where people are like, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the Kylie Jenner's of the world, the Kim Kardashian's of the world. You don't have to look like that. You can get by on being smart. You can get by on, you know, yeah, you had an abortion. Okay. So pick it up, Mm -hmm. repent, move on and own it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had sex with all of these guys and you know, they're calling you all kinds of names. It is what it is. Move on. You had your hot girl summer. Now let's get to the bag, period. You don't right. have to feel like you need to to please other people and get validation, like you said, from the world. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. Absolutely. So what are some things we can do to heal from our past struggles? Man, you know what? Being accountable mm. for the mistakes for your part. Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. while no one wakes up and says that they want to be a drug addict no one wakes up and volunteers that like oh I want to be addicted to drugs I want to be a pro nobody says those things however once you go through that and you've done it and you're you're committed to no longer living a lifestyle that hurts you anymore Mm -hmm. you own that you take accountability I did it I did it for whatever reason but I did it and I forgive myself you and know, we'll and from it. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> and then I think the next piece of it is, you know, telling yourself that it's okay. Because a lot of times we tell ourselves it's just we're not supposed to be better. Like mm-hmm. my mom didn't love me. My dad didn't love me. My I didn't have anybody. Every man that I wanted, he left me. Every woman that I had, she left me. I'm not supposed to have a good relationship. I'm not supposed to have a great relationship with my kids because I didn't see that growing. We sometimes project these experiences mm-hmm. into our own personal lives. And the moment that you say, no, I do want this. I no longer want to be a part of this generational cycle that I've seen. I'm going to commit every single day to be the exact opposite of what I saw my parents do. 
Mm-hmm. Then you can start overcoming these struggles. And then I think the last thing is fear. You know, fear holds us back so much. And I say this all the time. It imprisons more people than the government ever will. Hello. Fear is only a, a it's a way our brain programs that says be cautious. Mm-hmm. But it's not saying don't do don't it. do it. Yeah. Be cautious. It's your brain saying, eh, alert, alert, alert. You got don't some you got wrong. a whole lot going on. Yeah. But let's focus it and hone into it. And it's okay to be a little bit afraid to do something, mm-hmm. especially a big decision, you know, like running, starting your own business or writing a book. What will people say? It's okay to be a little afraid, mm-hmm. but you got to overcome that fear. And so mm-hmm. I just tell people embrace your struggle. That's your story. Nobody else has that story. Those are your feelings. Mm-hmm. That's how you feel. No one else can tell you how to feel and push mm-hmm. through that. And then on the other end of the the the, the rainbow, you'll get a pot mm-hmm. of gold. Let mm-hmm. that hurt go. Yeah. Forgive yourself. Forgive yeah. yourself. Period. And sure. so those those are kind of like my target pieces, especially when I'm working with my clients to mm-hmm. begin that healing. But it's only when you're willing and ready to talk about it. Because people don't like to tell the whole truth of their story. Okay. But when you're ready to talk about it. Then you can heal. Yes. For sure. Yes, ma'am. Just to highlight one very one thing that you did say, um, the first step you said was like taking a self, that self-accountability. And mm-hmm. I think our society as a whole is really lacking that self-accountability. Um, even if it wasn't your fault, it's still your responsibility to heal from it. You Come through. can hold on to that for the rest of your life. Um, And like, I even think about the situation with uh, my twin's father, like that man did everything you can think of wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, But I don't have responsibility for him. I'm not in control of his behaviors, but what I am control over the fact is I welcomed him into my life. Mm -hmm. I put him in a position to be able to impregnate me. That is something I did have control over. Mm -hmm. And I allowed him into a space that he honestly didn't deserve to be in. Mm. And so even if at a minimum, that's the only responsibility I have is allowing him in that to do the things that he did. That's enough for me to learn from. Yes. And that's enough. What we are not going to ever go through again is that. Okay. (laughs) We're going back there. So how can we avoid it? How we avoid it by having better standards. Yep. Plain and simple. Um, but I think when we don't, when we want to hold on to that victim mentality, and um, there are people who are victims, got it. But even when you're the victim, there is something that you could learn. And, and even if that's a sense of how do I protect myself better moving forward? Um, and not to be insensitive, because, again, there are plenty of victims who really have been hurt by other people and didn't have any control in how they were hurt. I get that. Um, but as an adult, I have chosen to be responsible for learning the lessons from the pain that I experienced, mm. even if I wasn't in position to stop the pain from coming the first time. You make such a great point. And, and here, the other thing that I would only add to that is a lot of times when we have this victim mentality after we've been, you know, betrayed, we think that someone is going to come and rescue us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Save me. Make me back whole again. Yeah. I'm broken. Fix me. Mm-hmm. And that's no, it's not going to happen. No one is going to come and save you. No one's going to be able to because you haven't done the work yourself. So I could be around here all day. I'm the same with you. You know, I I came off of a horrible, horrible divorce Mm -hmm. um, and some things that, you know, just really shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. However, I take accountability for the fact that, you know, there were times in my relationship that I wasn't always the best woman. Mm-hmm. And and that may not, it doesn't justify the things that he right. did. However, right. but there were times where I just wasn't at my best with this person. And that could have contributed to some of his actions. And I also take accountability for all of the red flags that I did ignore Hello. before I said I do. 
Okay. And, and then after that, I had to take a break. I had to be with myself. Yeah. I had to, I had to really figure myself out and, and figure out where I was in life. And I just, I knew no one was coming to say, no one could give me the answers. I was so heartbroken. I was so, no one could help me figure it out. I had to go through my own spiritual process. And then I, I had to build, you know, with God and you may not need God or some people don't believe in him or whatever. And that's whatever your prerogative is. However, you have to understand that there is something bigger than yourself that is out here that has to go through you mm-hmm. in order to get you about that situation. Yeah. And you yeah. can wait all day hoping that somebody is going to save you, hoping that somebody's going to come and rescue you. But baby, they're not coming. Not coming. And the, the the difficulty with that is if you're waiting for someone to save you, you then transfer that baggage that somebody else caused and then look at the next person like, you need to fix me. What I Girl. Did you. They did not break you. <laughs> Amen. And a lot of times, so I've, um, me and uh, my twin's father, we broke up just around the miscarriage. So we, I've been single for three and a half years. Wow. And sometimes people look at me like, well, what's wrong with you? I'm like, well, first of all, I had to heal. Okay. Mm-hmm. So not only was I going through a breakup, but I also was grieving two children. Yeah. You know, like I needed time from that. And then after I had took, I took the time I needed from that, I then took time, even more time, to realize, like, who do I want and what do I want? And now that I know very clearly what I'm looking for, I'm like, ah, ah, that ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> no, baby. <laughs> Excuse me. You're not the one. Good over me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm comfortable being alone until the one knocks on my door and says, hey, girl, I'm here. I'm ready. Oh and my not, just, not just meeting someone who checks all the boxes, but checks all the boxes and is ready mm-hmm. for what I'm ready for. So, you know, it's like, yes, three and a half years have flown by. And yes, I do miss being in a relationship, but I'll be damned if I settle because the last time I did that, it didn't work out well. Oh, my goodness. Amen. I'm, it's just being patient and, you know, and that's one thing that I had to think about too, is just, you know, love and what, what my definition of it is. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure that it has clear values and it's a clear definition. So that way I'm not getting confused by my emotions because Mm -hmm. sometimes lust feels like love. Yes. And, and when you start to separate and you say, okay, what's my values? And people don't want to have these conversations because then they get to see the ugly truth mm-hmm. that, oh, mm-hmm. the person that I'm with may not be the same definition of what I figure is love. Uh-oh. And I need to get out of this situation. Okay. So you, it's good when you're by yourself and then you can figure out, okay, well, this is how I define love. And for me, it's got to be easy. I was just explaining this to someone the other day. I was like, love is just patient. It's mm-hmm. just, it's a beautiful thing. It's never to a point where when someone gets mad at me that they mm-hmm. have to call me names. That's not love. Mm -hmm. Or they got to put their hands on me. That's not love. But Mm -hmm. it's just so easy. It happens so naturally. And I don't really have to change so Mm -hmm. much of my imperfections that I'm embarrassed about. Because that person will love me in spite of. Mm -hmm. And and when we get to the place also with loving and with conditions. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that blows my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have the nerve to to walk around. I will love you if, if you do this, I'm going to love you. If you're, I'm going to love, no. When you make a decision to love someone, and and I tell people this all the time, they look me crazy because of all of the things that my ex did to me. I still love him. That was my choice. You decided to love him. Yeah. I wanted to, and I don't want anything to ever happen to him, ever. (laughs) I wish him the best of luck, you know? Just do your best, but just do your best away from me. And I mean that with all sincerity. And I'm the same way with uh, my twin's father. And like when people hear the full story, they're always like, damn. I'm like, I don't have ill feelings for him. I don't have hate in my heart for him. I did at first. I had to work on it. Oh, God. <laughs> I had to work on it. <laughs> but like at this point, I'm like, I wish him the best. I hope he does have children one day. I know he wants children. I hope he has healing before he has children one day. Um, I don't wish any harm for him. Um, and we spoke probably about a year ago and he was saying how, um, he was feeling really suicidal. 
And I told him, I said, listen, let me tell you one thing I know for sure. You're not going to put me through losing children and their father. Wow. Like, it's not about romantic love anymore. But we'll, I'll never, ever, and I remember he said this at one point. He was like, every time you think of the twins, you're going to think of me. And I don't want to have that relation. I don't want to think about somebody in the hate them. Um, yes. One thing that I heard, um, I think I saw it on Facebook one, like a while ago, but the, the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, they said, if you can't replace the word love with the person's name, it's not love. So mm-hmm. for example, Rochelle is patient. Rochelle is kind. Rochelle does not envy. Rochelle is not proud. Rochelle is not rude. Like if I can't replace your name, and put it in there, it's not love. Amen. It's not Amen. love. It's so that like that unbiased definition of love. I oh. think that's really huge for sure. So I agree with you a hundred and fifty percent on that one. Yeah. You know, yeah. and loving yourself is a part of that. And that you know that part. Are you patient with yourself? Are you kind with yourself? You know? Yeah for sure so how can we use our story to help and benefit others you know I think just when you think about what your story is right and when you see someone going through something you know be a listening ear not necessarily to inflect your your whole thing and be miss positive or miss deep because mm-hmm. everybody doesn't need that right but sometimes people just seeing you online doing what you're doing like how you're doing it can be can make all of the difference and when someone reaches out you know reaching out you don't judge them because you've been through exactly what they've been through Mm -hmm. and so when my heart compels me you know like I went to court for a ticket and in the ticket process there was a lady there who was going through the same issues custody she Mm -hmm. was broken Mm -hmm. she was crying you know the divorce and the man it was so bad but my heart compelled me to get up and just give her a hug you know, and just let her know. And she just said, she kept saying, I feel embarrassed because, you know, all, all of us were in there. We weren't in there for no custody court or anything. Right, you right. know, I went to her and I gave her a hug, you know, and I gave her my phone number. She didn't know that I was a doctor of psychology or anything like that. If you ever need somebody to talk to them here. So when you see people going through something, genuinely reach out to them and just tell them how, you know, one thing that drives me nuts is when people see a person's Facebook post and then they tell them, Oh, you're, you're vetting too much on Facebook. You need to take that down. And while I will say that, you know, logging into your ex-boyfriend's account and saying he got STDs might not be the most effective way to (laughs) to vent. But when you get on there and you say, I find it to be very therapeutic for some people Mm -hmm. be encouraging and let them know you know, hey, I see you going through something. If you need me, I'm here for you, girl. Like, I'm here for you, sir. You know what I mean? As opposed to condemning them for how they feel. Exactly. And the other piece of it is so many of us have a gift. And that gift is speaking. And we don't want to because we're embarrassed. But mm-hmm. even using a, a IG Live, a Skype, Zoom, or whatever, putting something together for free, you know, we're not charging a, a million dollars an hour to allow people to come to a consensus with you starting that group. There's someone out, out here right now that's going through something or that went through something that could start a support group for someone right now that's sitting at home mm-hmm. on a zoom for free zero ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed of your story. So I think that those two things are very important, you know, um, just not being embarrassed and just reaching out, being a lending and helping hand to someone that may be going through something. And then on the other part is just owning your gift, putting yourself out there, no matter how bad you may think that people will judge you because someone's going to gravitate to you. Mm-hmm. And that one person could be the difference between whether or not they, they feel in suicidal. Yeah. So I think that that's important. For sure. And I think one thing that I would like to add um, is understanding that sometimes people just want to vent. You don't have to have answers. You don't have to have a solution. And please don't make one up if you don't actually know. (laughs) You know, if you don't actually know the answer, don't feel the need to come up with something. Um, Like if someone's grieving a loss, you're like, well, God needed his flower back. Ciao, bye. Like that doesn't happen, (laughs) you know? Sometimes people want to be able to just get it off of their chest. 
Yes. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just listen. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, for sure. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Doing what I want to do. Doing what I feel as though is the right thing to do. And make no mistakes that I'm led by a higher power. So everything that I do before I do it, you know, I try to just talk it through with myself and Jesus. I'd be like, okay, God, am I making the right choice? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know. But Mm -hmm. I don't operate in the realm of rules Mm -hmm. where society, where the internet can tell me what to do. I'm I'm not here for where the perfect, because have it been said, for me, the way that I dressed you know, for a long time. And I'm a tomboy. I love to wear my sneakers, you know, my whatever, my J's and all that stuff. They said that I would not be a therapist, a successful one, you know, dressing like that. And I do believe that dressing to impress is important, but I know who my clientele and who my audience is. And so if I could help the youth and not come across as being a elitist and all of this stuff, stuffy, bourgeois, you know, then that's what I'm going to do. And so I just own who I am, you know, and I, I do not follow by people's rules. I'm the, I'm the most self-aware person in my, in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? So being self-aware helps a lot too. And so in knowing that I don't let people's ego challenge me to have to assert myself a certain kind of way or have to debate and explain something that they would never even understand. You can't tell me anything about my story. You can't tell me anything about my path to success because you you haven't been there. Now, I do listen. Mm -hmm. That's the other part, you know, to success. And sometimes that you do have to listen to other people's wisdom, you know, and your customers, you know, that's really important because there were a lot of mentors that came in my life and they told me a lot of good things Mm -hmm. and my ego and pride could have said nah whatever now Mm -hmm. no but I took it with me yes that's so huge and I'm the same way I like to view God as my business partner I'm like okay you want me to do this cool let's go (laughs) you want me to stop doing that all right cool no problem yeah and having that flexibility to be able to do the things that he's calling you to do, um, it, cause he, pro- his will, his bill, like he will give you the provisions for the things that he wants you to do, whether that's provisions by way of opportunity, money, energy, like some people are stressed out cause you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? Um, so I, you know, I feel like I have the energy and the bandwidth to be able to do all the things I do because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the moment I do think, and, um, the moment I try to do things that I remember my mom told me, she was like, there's a difference between what God told you to do and the things that are just good things to do. Amen. Because I remember um, when I was in Maryland, I was coaching cheerleading. Um, I love cheerleading. I love competitive cheerleading. And But I was feeling so burnt out. I was trying to build the business and I was working full time and, you know, all of the things. And I was like, I keep missing practices because of business events and blah, 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 blah. And that's when we had that conversation. Fast forward a few years. Now I'm in Charlotte and I'm coaching cheerleading again. And there's no conflicts. The schedule just seemingly works. My business has yet to interfere with practice or competition schedules. And I'm like, it's, I now feel like this was the time, not that I wasn't supposed to be coaching cheerleading, but now I'm supposed to be coaching cheerleading because God is now giving me the grace. He's given me the opportunity. He's given me the energy and I'm able to do what I love. And it's a good thing. But I'm able to do it in a way that it all fits and it all works. And I'm not stressed. I don't feel no guilt because I'm missing things. Um, Like, I remember right before I stopped coaching cheerleading in Maryland, it it was the month of May. And every weekend, I had to miss practice because of of a business event. The whole month. Uh And when the director brought it, you know, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to this week. I'm not being, and she's like, I didn't realize you were going to be gone the whole month. And I was like, mm. okay. <laughs> that, that's when I realized, like, I'm not doing this team a service. 
Mm-hmm. And because I knew full-time entrepreneurship was the goal, I was like, I got to put my all into the business. Because um, at that point, I wasn't even getting paid to coach cheerleading. So I was like, you know, we got to <laughs> we gotta make a decision. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's in awe. I'm in awe to go 360 and see, like, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, it works. Yes. It works. And oh, you don't have to stress. You don't have to worry. You don't have to have, ang- not that you don't have to have anxiety, but you're not overwhelmed mm-hmm. when you're doing the very things you're supposed to do when you're supposed to be doing them. Yep. It all aligns perfectly. For and sure. it just takes a minute. You know, you have to really, really focus. That's mm-hmm. the most important thing. You know, you can't be out here ripping and running, trying to chase a guy, chase a girl. You know, it's ultimate focus mm-hmm. that gets you there. And so that's a huge part of success. Absolutely. What final thoughts do you have for us as an audience? Well, I would just say, you know, that this podcast really is helpful to a lot of people. You know, I've seen a lot of the speakers that you've had on here. So, you know, if you have an opportunity to take a look at a podcast such as this one, you should do it, you know, really do it. And then the other piece of or the takeaway that I want to give everyone, you know, is that Just own who you are, Mm -hmm. wherever you are in life. If you know you jacked up, own that, man, right now I'm jacked up. I'm a hot mess, but I'm working on myself. Yeah. Don't forget that part. You know what I mean? But just own exactly who you are. Don't feel compelled to compete with Mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. Compete with yourself and you will start, things will start falling into place. And the last piece of advice is for those that are feeling stuck. Because a lot of people are feeling very stuck right now. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to discount their feelings. You're stuck, but this is temporary. Mm -hmm. You're stuck, but don't stay there. Yeah. So even though you may be feeling like a lot of the the world stopped, Mm -hmm. this is just the time for you to refocus and come up with a plan and figure out where you're supposed to be. So what do you do when it's just you and your character at night? You know, Mm -hmm. you ended up, you got to check that person, check that ego. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of that is just working on yourself. So I want people to be encouraged and to be in love. You know, everything you do, do it in love. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can make the world a better place just by those little values. That's all I got for today. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing conversation. Girl, I knew it was going to be good, too. (laughs) Um, Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you, your brand, your business, all of the amazing things you have going on? here Nicole stop it (laughs) Uh, I love you Um, they can follow me so if you'd like you can reach me on Instagram or you can follow my post on Instagram I try to keep it you know really motivating and positive it's Dr. D.R.R.M. Thompson D.R.R.M. Thompson or you can follow me on Twitter which is pretty much where I say whatever I want to say hello Uh, so (laughs) <laughs> you know if you need some laughs or you know yeah. you want to have some interesting debate with me you can come there Rochelle Mincy Rochelle M-I-N-C-E-Y-T and then you can find me on Facebook Rochelle Mincy Thompson follow my page um, and you can go to my website www.rochellemthompson.com um, and that's where I am email me Rochelle at Rochelle M. Thompson girl I can go on all day Hello. Go but, on. Uh, <laughs> you know, follow Tierra Nicole and she <laughs> definitely shared posts with me before. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you guys want to find me, the best way is probably going to be Facebook and Instagram right now. Fair enough. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank I think you. has gotten a lot of jokes. I know I have. So I appreciate you. It's so amazing. You really are. And I'm Thank so you. excited for everything that you have going on. I can't wait for next year for the conference to have you back as a speaker again. I mean, you're just really a dynamic and resilient person. So I'm just so thankful that I know you. So I'm excited too. And I'll be tuning into the podcast. um, The next one that's coming up. So (laughs) thank you so much. All right, girl.